My name is Teresa Fankino, and I'm the curator of this exhibition. Working from home has been on many people's minds, not at least since the pandemic, but it is a development that's been in the making for at least a century. Technology such as new appliances, computers, and the internet has changed the ways we work in the home, from home, and at home. We're starting at the entrance of the exhibition, looking at homes from around the world. These homes were used for entertainment purposes in the early 20th century to show how people have lived in different countries, in different social classes, and under different circumstances. The reason for why we're showing you these images is that we want to make clear that home doesn't necessarily mean the same to everyone, and not every home looks exactly the same. Michigan State University was one of the first schools in the United States to have a school of home economics. Since 1896, women learned at this school how to become a professional homemaker. Despite what many people might think, this did not mean that they were housewives. They were professionals who learned many sets of skills from hard sciences such as chemistry, to child rearing, to interior decoration, and to financial management. For this exhibition, we uncovered a set of photos from the 1940s and 50s that show the activities at the School of Home Economics and show how home economics turned homemaking into a serious profession. Social norms govern everyone's relationships. Mother, father, children, everyone in these images is seemingly playing a role they're assigned to play. While mother works in the house, father sleeps or drinks. These stereotypes originate from the early 20th century and show how rigid the household was divided by genders. The visual history of the Depression has produced some of the most iconic images of home life in the United States. From tenant farmers struggling to make ends meet to those who benefited from purchasing farms, we're showing images here that have become part of the imaginary of the United States. On the opposing table, we're showing images that were taken around the same time by a photographic agency called Ewing Galloway, depicting Native Americans and their practices in and around the home. Not all homes are permanent. Many workers have to move their homes, sometimes seasonally, sometimes consecutively, in order to be able to fulfill their jobs. We're showing images here that depict the iconic American cowboy the myth of settling and working in the West, next to an image of a worker in a Hungarian coal mine who has to live and work next to the mine and travel in order to be able to have his job. What does it mean if you cannot have a permanent home is what these images are trying to address. Work House is a nightmarish simulation of a permanent lockdown. It focuses on a family of orcs who live and work in confinement. While these video game characters may seem out of this world, they do explain something that many of us may have experienced, being stuck at home and unable to leave. The design of our homes and offices matter. Artist Angela Washko takes the idea of the office cubicle to the extreme. In her use of the computer game The Sims, she simulates what constraints an office design does to the artificial intelligences that inhabit her woman house installation. Over time, they cannot fight the constraints that are being put on them by the architecture they're forced to inhabit. Merger takes on today's workaholic culture. In Keiji Matsuda's video, a female worker is employed by an artificial intelligence company. No life hacking and no self-improvement will ever enable her to catch up to the artificial intelligence. Her only hope is to one day merge with her digital overlord. Guan Yu Zhu focuses on immigration and how temporary visa holders in the US are trying to make a home. In his photos, he shows the private spaces of recent immigrants, the objects they brought with them, and the photos that represent them. The titles of these works are made up of letters and numbers to symbolize the person's name, the person's date of immigration, and the date when the photos were taken. This is meant as a reference to the dehumanizing nature of the United States immigration system. Since the pandemic, beds and kitchen tables have become home offices for many. 
For some, however, they have served as private movie studios for much longer. Especially disabled people often face situations where they cannot leave the home. Marissa Olsen's new installation focuses on exactly that and shows the many things that home offices try to edit out through the small window of the computer that we show to the outside world. Artist Faith Holland focuses on the intimacy of digital devices. She looks at them as an extension of the body, and that means that they get treated the same way, whether they're being primed for YouTube tutorials or turned into plushy toys that you can take to bed. They are an intimate extension of the body. Working from home today includes many different kinds of domestic work, including traditional tasks such as homemaking and child rearing, to newer forms of labor, such as Instagrammers or YouTubers, to all the different ways that we inhabit remote office spaces.